What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Giselle and I'm a sonographer, ultrasound technologist that lives out here in Las Vegas and I love all things Disney and I work in a hospital and I work graveyards and today is my Monday and you guys, I scanned 14 patients today and every single one of them had something abnormal in their study. That was a crazy night, you guys. I'm about to clock out here soon, but I wanted to show you guys some of the cases that I had today. And these are things that you might see one time or two times here or there, but not all the time. But then it was just crazy because every single person had something wrong with them. Today, I'm not gonna go over everything that I saw, but I will go over some of the things that I thought were interesting. And I think you guys would like to know or see or hear or talk about. And I'm just gonna kind of go right into it because there's a lot of different pathologies that I want you guys to see and know a little bit about. I'm not gonna go into full detail, but I'm just gonna show you guys what you can possibly see in a hospital setting. So without further ado, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, comment down below for more topics that you guys want me to cover. And we'll just get right into the video because there's a lot of cool stuff. Well, not cool, I don't know, sad. I mean, when someone has abnormal things, it's like you want your patient to be normal, but like, I don't know, we're the investigators and we have to see what's wrong and what's going on. And it's just crazy when everyone has something going on. So some of these things are actually really, really sad. Very, very sad. And it's, it's sad for the patient and horrible for these patients to have these abnormal things. But it's cool for sonographers and students like you to be able to see these things because you're not going to see these things every single day and you're not going to see these things in a lot of places that you work at so yeah we're just going to show you some of the abnormal things that i saw today all right let's go before we begin i just want you guys to know that in the healthcare field we will see a lot of abnormal and very unfortunate situations our hope is that we don't find anything wrong with our patients however our job is to catch what's going on inside their bodies this night includes a miscarriage and cancer, so if those are sensitive topics to you, I suggest to watch the following with discretion. Thank you. The first image that I'm going to talk about is a deep vein thrombosis or also known as a blood clot. You can see that the vein in this image on the right side of this photo does not completely compress. So I put the calibers there to measure the part where it doesn't compress. And at this point, that means there is a blood clot within it. We will turn sag on it, sagittal, to show that there is thrombus within the lumen of the vein. So we can describe it as echogenic material within, say that it's non-compressible, and it still has flow in it. So we're going to Doppler it, but we're not going to augment it because there is a thrombus in it. But this is just an image that shows that there is a blood clot within this patient's leg. This patient arrived to the ER with bilateral lower extremity swelling slash edema, but their main concern was that they had excruciating pain in their right leg. And because of this, doctors will order an ultrasound to make sure that patients don't have blood clots. And sure enough, this patient had a blood clot in his right popliteal vein. This was the only vein that had thrombus in it. And typically what the doctors will do is prescribe some type of blood thinner for this patient. The next patient we're going to talk about is another vascular patient. We scan arteries in legs to make sure that the blood flow is going to the feet. This patient had a really, really bad pain in their leg and their foot in the left leg specifically. So they ordered a unilateral left lower extremity arterial ultrasound. We do color, black and white, and Doppler on all of the vessels in the leg for this patient. However, at the left superficial femoral artery at the mid portion, there was no flow. Once I put color on it, there was actually no color coming through I set my frequencies and I lowered my color Doppler scale and still got no flow. So at this point, we know this artery is occluded, meaning there is no flow, there is a blockage, and it is causing a lot of pain for this patient. Typically, they go into surgery for these kinds of situations, especially if it's really, really bad. 
The next case is something that is a little bit more common to see in people in the emergency room. They are arriving with right upper quadrant pain or chest pain slash epigastric pain as well as pain that's radiating from the right side of their body to their back. They typically will also present with nausea, vomiting, severe pain after eating, as well as jaundice. Many of these patients will also show what's called a positive Murphy sign, which means they're going to react really badly when you put your probe in the area of the gallbladder. So this gallbladder in specific has a gallstone that is lodged in the neck within the gallbladder. That means it doesn't move, especially when you turn the patient. I turn this patient left lateral to cube onto her left side and the gallstone is still there in the neck. You can also see that there is a little bit of fluid around the gallbladder, which is also called pericholecystic fluid. So you would describe the gallstone in the neck and you would also describe that it doesn't move as well as the fluid around the gallbladder. You would also have to decide whether or not you think that the wall is distended or thickened. So that means anything over three millimeters will be a thickened gallbladder wall. And typically this can mimic an infection and sometimes these patients will have to go through surgery to remove their gallbladder, especially if it's something that they really can't handle because a lot of times people live with gallstones if it's not causing them any issues. But a majority of the time, they will end up getting their gallbladder removed. In the next scan that I did, I had to do an abdominal ultrasound. The abdominal ultrasound includes everything inside the abdominal cavity, such as your spleen, kidneys, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, and all the vessels inside of your abdomen. However, this patient has a mass in their liver, so I had to pay more attention to that liver to make sure I'm getting the images for the doctor to show them where I found it. You can see I put color on here and this is the right dome of the liver. So I'm taking pictures of the mass in sagittal and showing that I can measure it to see the borders around it. You can see it's kind of irregular, a little bit heterogeneous, and you can also see that the liver is a little bit bright, which means increased echogenicity. These are terms you're going to learn how to describe things that you see abnormally. But when you see something abnormal, you always want to take them in two planes, in sagittal and also in trans. And you also want to put color on them to show if there's color within it or around it. So this mass is shown in trans and with color, and I also showed it in sag with color. I also measure it in sag and trans just so they know the size of the mass as well. And when I'm describing it on my paperwork, I'll typically say, hey, there's this irregular complex or heterogeneous mass. You can say structure, you can describe it however you'd like. Just make sure you're describing the mass, saying if there's flow, if there's no flow, and also the measurements of the mass and the location of the mass as well. So this was in the right dome of the liver. We don't know the type of mass because the patient would have to have a biopsy to figure out if it's benign or malignant. The same exact patient with the liver mass also has sludge within the gallbladder. So whenever you see any abnormalities within the gallbladder, you want to make sure that you know if it's echogenic material that's moving around within the gallbladder or debris that's moving around in the gallbladder, or you want to know if it's attached to the wall. So you have them turn just like the other patient I had earlier turn, and you want to see if it's moving around in there and sure enough, this sludge was moving around and so I would just describe it as I see it and make sure I put those findings in my report as well. The next abnormal study also has to do with the liver. This patient has a history of cancer and in the liver you can see a lot of different texture to it. It looks very heterogeneous and coarse and you are gonna learn how to describe these types of findings in school. When you do find these kinds of livers, you have to understand that there might be some other things going on as well with the rest of the body. This patient was super skinny and I could tell that something was going on because the minute I put my probe on, I could see a bunch of fluid around the right upper quadrant area. So you can tell that the liver is very heterogeneous and it's not smooth at all. So that's how you're gonna describe it. You're gonna describe the liver and 
use your sonography terms that you've learned. You're going to also take pictures in sagittal and transverse, and you're going to show the free fluid that's around the liver. You can also tell that the borders are kind of lobulated, and you can see off to the side that the gallbladder looks kind of abnormal as well. So whenever you take a look at what's going on in your patients, you want to make sure you're taking the right amount of images to show what's going on inside the abdomen. And typically, whenever you have an issue with the liver, you may have an issue with the gallbladder. So this gallbladder looks like it's a bit thickened and it's having a little bit of edema going on around it. You can see that in trans, the walls look a little bit more thickened and there's very echogenic areas around the wall. But you want to make sure you're describing everything as you see it and not diagnosing this patient because the radiologist or the doctor are the ones who will be diagnosing these patients. The next finding that you're going to see here is an enlarged ovary with multiple cysts. Cysts in the ovaries are very common. However, sometimes they grow and get really big. These cysts right here have some internal debris, and so you're going to describe the cysts that you see. This patient came with right lower pelvic pain, and she has a history of cysts, so she knew what was already going on. You want to make sure you color Doppler, and make sure you use pulse wave to prove that there is Doppler flow within these ovaries and no torsion is happening. Because of the cysts, you're more likely to have torsion as well. So you want to make sure that you measure the ovary and sag and trans, and you also want to make sure that you measure the largest cyst. And some places they make you measure all of them, but at our place we just measure the largest one. And we mentioned that there are cysts, but we also want to mention that there is blood flow to the ovary to rule out torsion. The next exam caught me off guard. This is a spontaneous abortion, which is also known as a miscarriage. In ultrasound, we do pelvic ultrasounds on top of the body, which is called transabdominal ultrasounds. But then we also do what's called a transvaginal ultrasound, where a camera goes through the vaginal canal to see things a lot clearer. On her transabdominal ultrasound, I did not see a gestational sac, but once I inserted the transvaginal ultrasound, I could see the gestational sac and the fetal pole within the cervix. This is very, very unfortunate, but we still have to move on and trek along and do the exam for this patient to make sure she gets the results she needs. What we do is do a full ultrasound on this patient, the full protocol that you do, but you also have to focus on the cervix, the gestational sac. You have to measure the gestational sac to see how far along the baby was and as well as measure the crown rump length of the baby as well as try to obtain and prove that there is a fetal heart tone or no fetal heart tone. This patient is currently bleeding a lot and you have to take your time and be patient with this patient and also go as slow as you can to make sure that they're comfortable and be the best sonographer you can be to help them get through this time. Many times they don't even know what's going on so you have to be careful with the things that you say. The next ultrasound is another OBGYN ultrasound. She is in the first trimester and she has a fetal pole. However, next to the gestational sac, there is this hypoechoic avascular area and this area is also known as a hematoma or a subchorionic bleed. It is right next to the gestational sac, so that's an indication for you to think that it's a subchorionic bleed and you can put color on it and you can show that there is no flow within it because vascular areas will light up in the red and blue but now you know there's no flow within it and you can tell that it's a bleed. We will measure it in sagittal and transverse planes and we will describe it in our paperwork so that they know. Usually hematomas and subchorionic bleeds will disappear and dissolve on its own but the doctors will most likely recommend the patient to come back and get checked or to follow up with their OBGYN, especially because this patient is in the ER. The final abnormal case is a very important one. This one is life-threatening. This is a ruptured ectopic pregnancy within the left adnexal region. You can see that there is free fluid in the posterior cul-de-sac on the transabdominal ultrasound. This right away can be an indication of something going on, especially if this patient is pregnant. Her HCG levels were really high, and she had a prior ultrasound that was suspicious for an ectopic pregnancy. 
at the time it was just a circular structure but now it's starting to get more complex and heterogeneous you can see here that there's a left ovary but also a structure to the left of that left ovary and so what i did was put on color and you can see my arrow indicating that abnormal structure to the left of the left ovary you can see that there is a lot of flow to it it's very complex and there's free fluid around in the pelvis area. So what I had to do was take some cines so that the doctor can see the complexity of this case. You can see here in the cine that there is a separate structure from the left ovary and you have to decide whether or not the ovary is attached to that structure or if it's separate from that structure. You can also see here in these cines that the structure is completely separate from the left ovary and that there is a lot of pelvis congestion with the dilated vessels around the area. So then after doing a sagittal and trans cine, I did a cine from right to left of the entire pelvis. So you can see all the fluid as well as the tubular structure that is ruptured on the left side as well as a separate left ovary. This patient was sent to surgery and had to have her fallopian tube removed. So you guys, those are all the cases I have for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, as a sonographer, you're going to see a ton of abnormal things. And it's okay if you don't know what's happening, what's going on. Your job is to be able to find what's going on, find the abnormality, be able to describe it, and paint a picture for the radiologist or the doctor. Because obviously we're not doctors, but we're trained to know what's abnormal versus normal. So with that being said, take a lot of time to ask questions in your clinicals and make sure you get your hands on those probes because you want to make sure you're scanning so that you can ask all the questions you can while you're a student so that when you're a sonographer, you know how to be confident and comfortable with calling things and calling things abnormal because that's our job. Our job is to find these pathologies and to figure out what's wrong with these patients and help them get one step closer to their diagnosis. All right, you guys, stay safe out there, be kind to one another, and always stay positive, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.